Uh, thanks, Robin, and uh, good morning, everybody, club members, ladies and gentlemen, and Doug. <laughs> um, there's one person I'm keeping an eye on, and that's Doug. Um, if anybody wants to know why, I'll tell you later. Today is said as a fun day, so the prime purpose of today is to have some fun, and if you do that, and that's all you want to do, that's absolutely fine. The other responsibility that we have, obviously, is to keep you safe. And uh, we'll do that in several ways. So I suppose there's a number of questions that come up for people are total novices, and I don't know whether we have many of those today. One is, is this going to hurt your car? And the short answer to that is no. There won't be an opportunity to, to do that. The worst thing that can happen is probably you could hit a flag somewhere, and generally those little marks are, aren't there, or they buff off very, very readily. Next thing, can it hurt you? Well, the answer is yes, it can. And probably the most dangerous thing that can happen, or the most, the worst thing that can happen to you today, is you'll get run over by a car. So the suggestion is, when you're walking around, keep your wits about you and see what's going on around you. And if you're driving a car and you're in any of the areas like the OST or the motor car, and make sure you're in first gear and you're just idling along. So basically, those things I think we've got covered. I know that Ken's mentioned, and he'll do it to every driver before they start. Uh, under our permit conditions, driving up the hill, there'll be no helmets. You'll be driving at road speed, certainly not very quick at all. And the idea is simply to give you a feel for what's going on. And I think it's fairly short, well, it is a fairly short hill climb. There's one part of it as you come over the causeway and you hit the, hit the, the wall, as I call it. Whenever I'm driving there at any sort of speed, and all the bells in my body ring and say, I shouldn't be doing this. Um, it feels all wrong to me and it might feel wrong to you today, but it's a good chance to get and have a look at what's going on. The other activity we're doing up there, and Rick will cover that, the OST, so I won't go into that too much. Some people see that as the first level of motorsport, it probably is. I don't find it quite that, quite that for me because there's no speed involved and I like a little bit of speed. My area of expertise this morning to talk to you about briefly is motor counters, and I'm not going to try and tell you how to do them because there isn't the time to do that. Um, it's probably appropriate today, and as far as um, today happens to be the Australian Motor County Championship being held at Mount Gambier on this very day. Um, they're planning to run 16 events. The way they usually do it is they'll line up uh, half of those events in the morning, and you'll go in your car and you'll drive through each one in, in rotation, have lunch and then do the rest in the afternoon. There would be uh, probably about a quarter of those events would, would, that would have reverse in them and the people that do them, do them at a pretty high standard. Here at the club when we do motor counters we uh, tend, because national meetings I think is that way, part of the secret society that Robin referred to, which I'm a member of. I don't think it's terribly secret, I think my, Robin's almost a member now as well. Um, most of the events we do, we do twice. Now, I'm not sure I totally agree with that because um, it's fine for me because I'm pretty good at it and if I make an error, I never make it twice. So what it ensures is that myself or somebody else that's done it for 45 years generally does pretty well because we don't make too many errors. And we also don't do any reversing events. Now, if you go to a, a real motor car outside the club, you'll certainly get involved in reversing events and when you're doing a Ford event, the time differences are very, very small. Uh, the reversing events are the ones that, that sort the, the uh, sheep from the goats. What I have given you today is a little, mud, uh, a little sheet, and what you've got on it is, is two events. We're just going to look at the two events. On the left-hand side, it'll show you the events as they come in the code. Um, th there's, a, there's a book, and I'll get into that in, in a second. And on the right-hand side, it's showing you a little, what, I, what I'll call a mud map that shows you the way to do it. The first of them is called the multiple loops, and the multiple loops is an event that you do in big circles. Uh, the bigger circles you can do, and the faster you can run is the way to run. If you ever go, if I ever go to a motor car event, and I watch people and they go out and they start to do what I call handbrake happy, they start pulling handbrakes, then I probably stop looking because they're not going to be quick. That's going to just cost them time. You just can't do that, and that's the way to run that event. The second event is the top hat, um, and I've popped that one in. Again, relatively easy to do. These events are pretty easy to go the right way, um, but you're going to have to place the car. There's a couple of circles there. You see the car's going around, and it needs to be fairly big circles. And you'll see 
if you look at it closely, you've got to turn fairly early. In other words, go out and get yourself around that, that flag so that you can get up to the top. And we can go into that in some detail out there if, if you want. So that's about as far as I'm going to go this morning. I don't want to stretch you at those things. Motor counters are timed events. Uh, you start and finish in a forward direction always. You come to a complete stop in the finish garage. And I always say to people, when you come to a stop in the finish garage, knock the car out of gear, take two or three big breaths and get out of that competition mode, put it back into first gear and idle away. Some people get excited and they want to leave like they're going to do another motor counter as they leave. There's penalties involved. Um, penalty generally is one second, uh, five seconds for hitting a flag and they have other things called WD. Some people think they're well done, but they're actually want wrong directions and that, that gets you a slowest time plus five. It's not ideal. Um, when you do them first, uh, I remember standing up here any number of years ago and one of the lasses, the wives in the clubs, when I was talking about it, said, it's all right for you, you're good at them. And I guess after 45 years, I hope I am. Uh, but I didn't start off that way. I can tell you uh, that I went to a Huntingdale um, challenge of clubs motor car years and years and years and years ago. Uh, I don't remember what year, but it was a long time. And I can remember in a field of about 130, I'd run second last. Uh, I'd run a couple of well done, so I'd hit three or four flags and I didn't have a clue what was going on. But I figured I wasn't that bad, so I persevered. And it's a, uh, an area of motorsport that I'm very involved in and I like very much. And the, one of the reasons I like it is the main control is the driver. The car's not quite as important as the driver. A good driver in a poor car will beat a, 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 good, a, a, poor, a good driver in, in a, a, sorry, a, a poor driver in a good car. And if you get the technique right, and it's a technique sport, then you can be very competitive at it and have a lot of fun in my view. So it's something that I think is worth persevering with and looking at. Now in the club, we run at a fairly high standard. And if you want assistance in doing these things, please tell us because we can take you through all the steps and we can bring you up to speed fairly quickly. If you go through the CAM site, you can get hold of a manual that will have all of the tests in it. Um, and that's probably worth doing if you've got an interest. Uh, and if you go to Google and put in motor counters, you'll be able to see um, videos of people doing it again at high, at high standards. Generally the cars that win championships are specials. And it's probably interesting to note that the year before last, it was won by a female. And last year she won second in the Australian Championship, which is a fairly good uh, result. Uh, one of the East girls, we used to go when we used to uh, go to Sydney State Easts and uh, certainly she's been indoctrinated in it from a young age, but it's something that you can work at and run. So if you want to do more, we're happy to do it. And I suppose if you're young and new and you're wanting to do things, um, the other thing you ought to do is read a bit about driving. Uh, I did put in today a book, uh, I think it's Ultimate Speed Secrets. From memory, it's by Ross. Bentley, worth getting and reading if you're into that sort of stuff. It's the sort of stuff you can't sort of put down in my view. The other black art, if you're going to get into this in a, in a bigger way, and I'll mention in passing, is probably a little bit on tyre technology. A lot of people come to these events and they say to me, what sort of tyre pressures do they run? Totally reasonable question. I generally ask what profile the tyres are and I flash a pressure at them. And it's really, there's really a bit more to it than that. It doesn't quite work that easily. I mean, I guess if you're interested in cars at all and you watch the Group A's, you'll hear Wind Cup's team say we stay off the kerbs in the first couple of laps because they're running lower tyre pressures to bring them, bring them to the correct tyre pressure. And often they're running quite low tyre pressures. We had a bloke from work that was out at Calder last week uh, doing, uh, a, I think it was a sponsorship day and he'd won a, a, a two laps in a raffle. Every time the cars come in, I guess they weren't the current Group A cars, but they were the older ones. They were adjusting tyre pressures, and I said to him, what were they adjusting them to? And it appears they were trying to adjust them at 25, keep the pressures at 25. Interesting, because this year, I think I've got my car going quicker because I've let tyre pressures down, and I can feel the car better. So, so it's a technology that we can talk about. Not a lot written about it, and I think that 
one pressure for one tire doesn't suit all cars. So it's just another area if you get to the point in. So if you want to know more, the club can, can take you along the road of, uh, of running these events. But as I say, today's about having fun, but I think it would be nice if you're learning something as well. And if you want to get a little further into it, please, please tell us about it and we'll take you on that, on that, uh, on that travel. But again, idea first of all, have fun, stay safe and uh, enjoy the day. And I think, uh, Rick, you're going to have a few words on OSTs. Uh, well, okay, if, if you like, let's do this. Um, this just happens to be this. This is the second event, and, and it's and it's looking from. Uh, this is a, my daughter practicing at Geelong. It's the second event with the uh, of the top hat. Uh, this event is actually laid over, and it's been done the reverse way. Um, and you'll see as you'll come out, um, go around that first flag, the one in the middle, then go out to the to the to left and you'll see what's probably pretty much a perfect handbrake turn. So as I say, in the second event, the correct way to do them, or the fast way to do them is handbrake turns. Don't expect you to be doing them today, uh, but it just gives you a clue. Don't know whether this is, I have trouble with this because I don't know whether it encourages people or discourages people, but, but it'll give you an idea of the sort of level that people run. The second one, she doesn't do quite so right, but, but it's not too far out. Thanks for your hat from over yonder. And they bring their baby hands away. Now that's, that sits on the flag there, uh, pretty, pretty right. This one, she misses it by about half a car length. Yeah. Just do that first one again, just to show this is what you're trying, trying to do. Actually, the car is set up so that the weight's out off centre. Pull on the handbrake as soon as you pull it on, let it go. Put the power on and the car comes around. And really, steering's used to, to correct correct the position of the car. Yeah. As I say, I, I show these things. Um, some people say you should. I should bring the car down. I should demonstrate. I don't think 